Do you know that all trees have the same kind of a substance like gasoline? It is real. What becomes brittle at roughly 150 degrees Celsius. Its cells begin to disintegrate and leak flammable gases. These gases are commonly known as smoke. But in truth, they're dripping with hydrocarbons. A molecule similar to those you encounter in fuels like octane and methane, among others. Hello and welcome to Z. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. When sufficiently heated, hydrocarbons both easily ignite and burn really beautifully. In this case, if the wood continues to smoke hotter, these gases interact with oxygen fast. In the air and ignite, igniting into flames. Friends, that chemistry of fire eye, and it is in charge of over 100,000 uncontrolled chemical processes, the more well known as wildfires, that together in the United States up to 3 million hectares of forest are consumed. And burst once annually. It is around the size of Maryland. Burning every year. But that's not altogether a negative thing. Fire serves many crucial ecological purposes. Numerous ecosystems have evolved for these objectives. So as to maximize it. The issue is that fire's role is to when something is destroyed, it encroaches on essentially everywhere is human territory, we have a difficulty. Wildfires are a truly spectacular manifestation of nature. They can run across roads in one bound, build their own wind, and under some circumstances, move at velocities more than 30 kilometers per hour. That's definitely quicker than you can, though. Run. And researchers are starting to notice changes. In the manner and location of wildfires, the truth is that they are expanding and fast. When you consider it, it makes sense, but heat, oxygen, and fuel are three things a fire needs. And energy. The fire triangle is how foresters refer to this. And wildfires will continue to move in the same direction. That has the most of these three in abundance elements. Similarly, the only way to put out a fire is to completely eradicate, or at least drastically reduce, any one of these. The heat source that ignites a fire can either naturally occurring or not, such as lightning, a flame from a campfire, or a match. However, which fuel does this ignite? Several variables affect heat, including how much of it there is, how much moisture there is especially given that it is dispersed throughout the surroundings. Lighter fuels, such as weeds, leaves, and needles, they tend to burn and dry out rapidly. Quickly. Branch and trunk fuels, which are heavy fuels, will take longer to warm up and ignite, similar to a tree. It truly comes down to the amount of fuel is what controls how quickly a fire spreads. The third point on the list is oxygen. How about that? Triangle? Well, oxygen makes up around 21% of air. While the majority of fires only need at least 16% oxygen to initiate and continue, these three components come together when combined to create one of nature's most potent, significant, transforming forces, etc. As a result, even though we normally consider in terms of what it destroys, fire affects a variety of ecosystems. Rely on it for upkeep and regeneration. Fires on grasslands encourage the establishment of eliminate trees and non-native plants with herbs and grasses. Avoid being crowded out by flora. Additionally, fire has always been a constant in forests. Environments that some species have really developed adapted to fully benefit from it, for instance, take the jack pine with its cones. Open in the presence of the blazing heat from seeds from a fire into the ashen-riched soil. Any living jack pine may perish in the nonetheless. This modification ensures that in their place, fresh ones will sprout. Additionally, forest fires frequently encourage flowering. Many plants bearing fruit, etc., Moreover, given that wood ash is one of the greatest fertilizers available, it only the majority of the nutrients that soils provide for the growth of plants, such as calcium and potassium magnesium, too. Ash also functions as a liming agent, since of the carbonates that are left over after burning wood. 
This increases pH to assist balance acidic substances. Soils. Additionally, fires eliminate most of the, the canopy is the forest's topmost stratum. Having removed that above protection, sunlight and raindrops can travel to the jungle. Floor. Other grasses can thrive in an attractive, open canopy. And wildflowers to establish themselves, while the conflict over nutrients and water in the ground. So what's not to love about fire, right? Ah, uh, yes. The devastation. Though we like to refer to them as natural disasters, the cause of wildfires is almost always human conduct. As stated by the U.S. State Park Service, nearly 90% of American wildland fires create harm to people, whether by illegal or discarded cigarettes, unsupervised campfires, like arson. Even fallen objects and sparks from power equipment forest fires have been linked to power lines. Fires But the reason for the final 10% of fires is lightning strike, which occurs almost always in nature or, in much rarer cases, lava, if a volcano happens to be nearby. Now, for decades, scientists have been studying fire behavior in the hopes of better understanding these notoriously unpredictable natural phenomena. And it's a complicated science. Obviously, weather plays a significant effect in this. Whether it be the humidity, temperature, or wind. Wind has the power to direct flames toward fresh fuel sources and by drying out other fuel sources materials in wet environments. In addition, as I previously indicated, flames can actually their own wind along with the scorching upwelling air they produce. This enables fresh air to fill the remaining space, leaving a fresh supply of oxygen in its wake. Sunlight and temperature, for example, make a fire go. The ground is warmed by sunshine during the day. And when the heated air rises, air currents might form to traverse a sloping terrain. The procedure is reversed at night, with the ground air currents move downhill as it cools. Consequently, flames frequently burn up slope in the both throughout the day and at night. High humidity levels can sometimes be irritating human beings, but the additional moisture and the spread of flames can really be slowed by air. By soaking up the fuel. At night, fires typically burn less furiously. Because the humidity is normally highest at that time higher. Having an understanding of these elements has made we are more effective in putting out and preventing wildfires. Considering that we can't always let its nature's process. Putting out a fire requires removing one piece. The simplest component of the fire triangle. The fuel is something we can manage. Consequently, battling fires doesn't always involve putting out the flames can be avoided by simply entail establishing a path for the flames. To exhaust all fuel, foresters frequently anticipate threats so they can where flames are present, switch to prescribed burning deliberately lighted prior to the dry season to get rid of the fuel and dead wood. This approach will also be used by firefighters when a fire, igniting flames to extinguish fuel before the blaze arrives, supplies. Of course, water is present. Now, I'm not sure whether you're aware of this, but water is particularly adept at extinguishing fires. Water attacks the fire's three components. Triangle, it dampens grasses and timber, assisting to diminish their utility as fuel, it cools putting objects in the earth and within the air. Fire nearby. Firefighters therefore add materials like gels to produce what essentially smothers is sticky water while cooling down the fuels. This concoction, or slurry, is frequently spilled, both from helicopters and aircraft. Some businesses even add a small amount of fertilizer, enhancing the recovery of plants following a fire and painted red so that pilots can identify it been discarded. But we have learned one crucial thing about putting out fires is knowing when not to them. 
foresters, at their peak in the 20th century, were tried to release as many at least in the United States. As quickly as they could, they set fires. As a result, woodlands grew densely, with additional tiny trees and bushes below the than you typically find with a natural canopy cycle of fire. Consequently, regular, lesser fires have occurred. Bigger megafires have taken their place, more intense and scorching. American Geophysical Union research discovered that the frequency of major forest fires in 17 states of the West are roughly seven between 1984 and 2011 per year. Moreover, the overall area affected by these fires each increased by almost 36,000 hectares a year. However, as you could expect, the increasing seriousness the cause of forest fires, but also the long-standing policy. More so than previously thought, climate change ever. As a result of climate change, temperatures are rising, a significant drought, earlier snowmelt, that causes spring growth to begin early. Additionally, it permits insect infestations, such as to reach new areas, winged bark beetles where they couldn't previously survive there are more dead trees due to pests, and more dead wood translates into more fuel. When considered collectively, these elements may explain why are there seven severe fires in the United States. Every season since 1960 has come after 2000, the year. The perspective is not limited to the United States is essentially the same elsewhere on the planet. Drier regions are predicted by recent studies to Australia and the middle latitudes are likely over time experience more flames. Additionally, regions at higher latitudes may possibly become more dangerous over time. And the reason for that is because those regions frequently peat soil with a lot of carbon content that can burn coal-like in length and heat. I am definitely not anticipating that the Arctic on a day when wild peak fires occur the circle has grown commonplace. I appreciate you viewing the SciShow Infusion. In particular, our subable users. To find out how you may assist us in investigating only needs to visit subable.com slash sizehow. Don't forget to visit Z as usual. And follow us.